Sections 1.1 to 1.4 discuss the main features of polynomial functions. Now 1.5 and 1.6, those guys are the ends of uh, the chapter one, and they talk about something a little bit different, which is slopes. So for our warm up, I don't think it hurts to go over how to calculate slope again. So here is a polynomial function. You have two points, so here's our first point, and why don't we highlight our second point in a different color. It really doesn't matter which one is your first point or your second point, you'll get the same answer in the end. I noted which one was my first point with these two little ones and which one was my second point with these little twos. Okay, so we're just going to stick all of those uh, green and yellow numbers into our slope formula. So your green numbers will go on top of each other here and that's where we get that 7 over 2 from. And then we're going to take our yellow numbers and we put those on top of each other, so 10 and negative 1. The minuses in the middle will stay in the middle. Now what you're going to do is simplify and evaluate. So simplify means if there are any symbols that are right beside each other, let's combine them. So a negative and negative make a positive. Then you get 7 minus 10 on the top and 2 plus 1 on the bottom. What you're going to do next is you're going to evaluate. So negative 3 over 3 gives you um, a negative 1 slope. And that kind of makes sense because this is a decreasing slope, um, which means a decline. Okay, so what does slope have to do with rate of change? Well, slope is rate of change. They're both the same thing. A rate of change is just a change in a rate. Wow, that's a very bad definition. Okay, so there's a better definition right here that you can read, um, but a good example of a slope is like speed. Okay, so speed like kilometers per hour. You have kilometers, which is distance, um, over a certain change in time. Okay, so your y values over your x values. And isn't that what slope is? I mean, it's just your change in y values divided by your change in x values. So this is just slope. And in um, advanced functions, we talk about two types of slope. So we talk about ad, um, the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so what's the difference exactly? Um, an average rate of change, remember, rate of change is just slope, is a slope that happens over a specific interval. So for instance, if you're talking about speed, what is their speed or their average speed between two hours and three hours? Versus say an instantaneous rate of change is when you're talking about um, a slope at a specific instant, or in other words, at exactly two hours, what is their speed? Okay, so 1.6 we will talk about in a separate video. Um, I'm gonna go over some definitions, but then we're gonna basically talk about 1.5 uh, material. Okay, so 1.5 discusses uh, secant lines and 1.6 goes into tangent lines. So a secant line is, remember how we said an interval? Where you have two points and then you're talking about the slope within an interval. So that is 1.5 material. Now 1.6 talks about an instantaneous slope or rate of change. And that's because a tangent touches only once at a specific instant on the graph. Okay, now we're going to talk about specifically a rock. Okay, so a rock is the average rate of change. It's just it's so many words. Average rate of change. Let's just call it an a rock. Okay, a rock is calculated using the slope formula. So change in y's over the change in x's, and um, you have your first point right there, and then you have your second point right here. Now a different way of writing it, but is basically the same, is this guy right here. So that means when you have your x value, whatever it is, you can sub it into your formula, and then you are going to get your y value, which is this. If you use a different x value right here, and you sub it into the same formula, you'll get a different y value, which is that guy right there. So you notice that these two equations are basically the same thing. Now in order to calculate your slope, you can have many different ways of seeing it. I mean, they could give you a graph like this, which is a distance time graph, and they could tell you, oh, I want to know what the, the speed is or the rate of change between 0 and 6 seconds. So 6 seconds is right here, and it looks like that's our first point. So we have 6 and a height of 350. Okay, And our second point, we'll just do in green, which is right here, is the 0 timeline. Okay, And that's this point right there.
So to figure out the slope, we're just going to take um, our y's and subtract them, and then our x's and subtract them. Um, a better way of writing it, if you were actually given an equation, is something like this. So you have your 0 as your x value, and then you're going to sub 0 into your equation. But since we don't have an equation, we actually already know that the y value is going to be 0. So we have these two right there. And again, if you had an equation, you would take your 6, sub it into the equation, and get your new y value. But since we already have it right here, I mean, we can cheat. Our 6 was at 350 uh, meters. Okay, so these are our two yellow numbers. And then we're just going to subtract and divide. Okay, so we get a speed of 58.3 meters per minute on average between 0 and 6 seconds. We could also calculate between 6 and 10 seconds and 16 and 25 seconds. They're pretty much the same um, formulas. Okay, so the work is right here. Now the zero speed and the negative speed, we can kind of take a look and we should be able to see, yeah, well, you're at the same distance of 350 over an interval of 6 to 10 seconds. So that means that if you're at the same distance, over a certain amount of time, you aren't really moving. Okay, so you're you're not moving any further or closer to um, your original point. Okay, and a negative uh, speed means that you're actually going at a regular speed, but you're moving closer to whatever your original point was. Another way that you could see um, this type of information is not through a graph, but through, say, a table. Okay, so you have a table of x and y values. In this case, we're talking about bacterial growth over time. Okay, so the first question is going to ask you, how can you tell the average rate of change is positive by examining the table of values? So, in other words, how do you know that your bacteria is growing in number? Well, we can kind of just take a look. I mean, Obviously, the numbers are going up, so the number of uh, bacteria is increasing, and that's how we know that we have a growth rate versus a decay. During which two-hour interval did the bacteria uh, population grow the fastest? So now they're talking about rates, and they're talking about is the rate the fastest from zero to two hours, two to four hours, four to six hours, or so on. That's when you have to start calculating your slope now. Okay, so let's just say uh, these two are our first point, so we're going to put them like that. And then our second point is going to be these guys right here, so we're going to put those on top of each other, and we will calculate our slope between 0 and 2 hours. Okay, so it looks like the growth rate is 161 bacteria per hour. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to calculate all the other rates from 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, and 8 to 10 hours. And it looks like if I look at all the speeds, this one is the fastest. So it looks like the bacteria is going pretty fast from 8 to 10 hours. We could have also seen that in terms of a graph. So if we decided to graph the table, um, it looks like all the different growth rates are here. And since this one is the steepest, it's actually the one that we're going to um, choose as the fastest growth rate. Okay, so this is almost like a little bit of an aside. Um, how can you tell when the rate of change is the same over an entire graph? Well, if I start drawing a bunch of tangent lines, like something like this, okay, so all along the graph, like notice that the slopes are decreasing, okay? Eventually at the bottom, you're going to get a slope of zero and then it's going to start increasing. So these are positive slopes. But basically, Throughout this entire graph, you have many different slopes, so they're not the same. In fact, this one's not the same either because you have a negative slope and then you have a positive slope. This one, you have many slopes again, so this one, the slopes are becoming more and more negative. Okay, and then up here, you might have slopes that are becoming uh, less negative. Okay, but they're changing. So this one is the only one where over an interval you have the same consistent slope. So this is probably our correct answer. The last thing and the thing that you'll probably see the most is if they give you a specific um, equation, then they tell you to find the slope or the AROC. Okay, so we're talking about a rocket. Um, this is a negative parabola. It's going to go up and then go back down. 
which is what we'll see. And they want you to find the average rate of change, or the AROC, between 0 and 20 seconds, 20 and 50 seconds, and 50 and 70 seconds, and see what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, like, let's say we talk about the very first one. Take your 0, sub it into your equation, so h at 0, and then put the 0 right underneath. Take your 20, sub it into your h equation, and then put the 20 underneath. So if I take the 20 and sub it into my h equation, it should look like this. If I take the 0 and sub it into my h equation, it should look like that. And then you subtract them, because you're subtracting your two y values. But remember on the bottom, you're subtracting your two x values as well. And once you calculate everything, you get this as your speed. So from zero, sorry, yeah, zero to 20 seconds, you're going at this speed. You're gonna do the same things for the other speeds that they've asked you for, and notice that you get zero for one of them, and then for the next one, it's gonna be negative 55. Okay, and that should kind of make sense because the parabola is gonna go up at a positive slope, it's gonna kind of peak at a slope of zero, and then it's going to go down at a negative slope. Okay, so remember that an A rock is basically just um, a slope over an interval of time. Okay, now the next video is going to be an instantaneous rate of change, which is just um, a slope at a specific uh, time period.